Hello, everybody. Hi. So we discovered recently that, uh, you know, the people who've been watching some of our other videos may think that we've been smoking our socks. <laughs> so, we, so we thought we'd explain. <laughs> Is that what they smoke over there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so today's topic is how you know that you can change your childhood memories. Yes, indeed. So, uh, oh, you're over to you. <laughs> it's your thing. <laughs> Steve came up with a great analogy uh, the other night. So, so yeah. actually, I think this is kind of also coming uh, from a place that there may be people that are new to what we're doing, that, that are following us uh, maybe for the first time, or they've just gotten started following us. Uh, and the, the whole notion of changing childhood memories, which is really of everything that we're doing, you know, is based upon changing childhood memories. There may be a, a thought or a belief that, can I really change childhood memories? Mm -hmm. Or maybe a belief that, yeah, I can't really change out a childhood memory. Mm -hmm. And so, also what happens to the old one when you, when you change exactly, the new one? Exactly, exactly, yeah. Um, so I think it, um, uh, we were recently having this discussion, I think it was what? Tuesday the, night? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the other evening at, at a meetup group. And uh, the analogy just kind of uh, popped to mind that it's something that we're doing naturally all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, what, we're, what we're proposing as you're changing childhood memories really isn't anything different than what you're doing all the time. And especially if you think about what you do with a telephone number. So if I just asked you right now, what's your telephone number? Mm -hmm. You would know immediately what your telephone or you know that that, that may not may be the not case, be the case now. <laughs> anymore but back in the day <laughs> when it was important to be able to know telephone numbers or your address think about your address you've got a neural pathway you've formed a neural pathway in your neocortex that holds that bit of information and you've conditioned that, and you know what that, that bit of information is. Uh, and, and it took a little bit of time to do that, but it was something that you did. At one point in time, however, you had a different telephone mm -hmm. number. And if you're anything, uh, I don't know, uh, it, maybe not everybody. Can you remember? Can you remember your 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 telephone number? Your first telephone number as a kid. I can't. I was trying to. I know it began with double three. If that helps, <laughs> I bet my sister remembers, and probably my brother too. Okay. Well, there's a challenge to Odile's sister. Can you remember the number? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I I can remember. Well, that's not necessarily fair because my folks still use the same telephone number. Um, but I can actually remember two or other two or three other telephone numbers that I've had previously in my mind. Now they're, you know, they're kind of faded. They're back there. I'm not using them every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. um, but when you think about an old telephone number, really all you're doing is accessing an old, an old memory, mm -hmm. uh, an old neural pathway that you've allowed to atrophy because you're not using it anymore. It's like muscles that we don't use. They atrophy. Mm -hmm. Um, so the same thing is true about childhood memories. And go yeah. ahead. So uh, the, the most important thing about this is when you learn your new phone number, you need to, well, when you learn any phone number, you repeat it over and over until until it comes naturally. So someone says, what's your phone number? And you're able to, mm -hmm. to say it straight away, recite it straight away. When you learn a new, when you get a new phone number, you, you have to learn the new one and you have to repeat it over and over until that becomes the new number. So what's happening in your brain is you're rewiring those connections. So the neural network that was dedicated to your old number is now starting to atrophy, starting to uh, break apart, so to speak. And the new neural network for the new phone number is becoming more established mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and more, um, they call it wired, because you're doing it over and over. So when someone says, what's your phone number? The new one comes to mind immediately. 
Now, in the beginning, the old one might, you might make a mistake and start saying the old one, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you have to correct yourself. Then you have to repeat the new one a few times to make it more solid. But here's the key. If someone said to you, uh, so have you only, is this the only phone number you've ever had? you know consciously that you've had plenty of others <laughs> and you may even remember some of the old ones. But what's happening is instead of being the first one to come to mind, you'd have to go and think about the old ones. And as you do that, you start uh, firing those old neural networks that were no longer in use. So when I go digging for the old phone number, then those start connecting and eventually, and then I remember the old one but the new one is the one that comes to mind immediately. And that is what you're doing with the childhood memories. So it's not like the old memories are erased or you can't remember them. It's that you would have to fire those networks again to remember them. They're right. still there, but you'd have to actually, uh, you know, right. You call it? And I, you know, <laughs> I've had discussions with people where there's a belief or maybe there's kind of a, an unspoken uh, concern that, you're actually brainwashing yourself. Mm. And that's really not what's going on. You're just creating new neural pathways. Right. And you're using one, you're enforcing a new neural pathway. And what we, you know, what we teach, what we uh, encourage people to do is to use those new neural pathways often. So yes. in other words, intentionally rehearse it like you would have to, um, learn the times tables or your new telephone number or anything else that's a new neural pathway. You know that you have to strengthen that uh, for a little while and then it becomes wired and you don't have to do that. Yeah. Now, the difference between a telephone number and an old negative childhood memory is that an old negative childhood memory is providing proof, maybe, in, in most cases, is providing proof about who you think that you are mm -hmm. and how you're interpreting the world around you. So a telephone number is a bit of data. So is a negative childhood memory. It's just a bit of, uh, 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 it's just a bit of data for, in your subconscious. However, it has the power. You're using that as a, a reference for how you act, react, and think about yourself in this world. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important to be changing childhood memories, to changing up those references, and to know that it is possible to do. Yes. All right. So um, as always, if you want more information about getting started changing childhood memories, you can always check the comment section below or the descriptions below. We'll put the links there for getting started as always. If you have any questions or comments, put those below as well. Lovely. Have a great week and we'll see you next week. Bye for now. Bye.